Hey everybody, it's Camille Damon, Diving Life Tutorial. A short and powerful one, again this time. Uh, last one was a bit longer where I created a groove template. And uh, this time I'm gonna show you how to use LFOs on your hi-hats to create interesting hi-hats. Um, you know, uh, let me show you this track that I'm working on. Uh, it sounds like this. <laughs> Sounds good, right? I hope you like it. Um, it is a, um, a very interesting beat because if I solo all the drums, sounds like there's a lot going on. So uh, in previous tutorials, I've talked about LFOs, low frequency oscillators, which are basically oscillators we cannot hear, but you can send sine waves or square waves to certain parameters and have them move the parameters over time. Um, this is a built-in function inside of drum rack. So if you go to your hi-hat and you go to controls, you'll see there's an LFO on it. So if I go to the channel, it's concerns. I cl take the closed hi-hat, this guy. Um, I have activated the LFO and the LFO can be assigned to the filter, to the pitch, to the volume and to the panning. And uh, you want to take retrigger off because retrigger would mean that every time a new higher display, the LFO restarts. Well, if it retriggers on, the LFO is going to constantly start again and you won't he hear the result. So the retrigger needs to be off. So the LFO is just doing its thing, it's free roaming, you know, and then you can assign it to pitch or filter. So the filter is like this. If I would up the filter to like extreme values, you can definitely hear what's going on. So you can hear it's moving, it's getting thinner and then thicker. So you don't want to do it that heavy. I always use it very minimalistic, so it's not too of a drastic change, but at least there's movement. And this movement creates more interest. You know, it's just like life. The more you move, the more new stuff you do, the more, yeah, the more alive you feel. You know, if you do something that you've never done before, you usually feel like, oh, wow, I've, I've done something I've never done before. So... Making your hides move, make them do stuff they've never done before is really important. Um, and so I use it a bit on the pitch as well. So this is what it sounds like on the pitch. So basically you see this sine wave here. It's making it move up and down in pitch. So again, I make it super slightly and I do this on uh, most of my hi hats So if we go to the 909 and we go to the controls, there's no one on there. Well, not this time, but if we go to the rights, for instance, uh, it probably has been done there as well. Rights, there you go. It's a very slow one. And let's listen what it does. You can hear it go thinner, especially this guy. The filter, but just again, ever so slightly. Pitch a little bit, probably don't even hear this, but you know, it's just moving. And it also has an auto pen, so it's moving left and right, which creates the effect that my hi-hats are moving. Makes it a bit more interesting. So you want to use LFOs on your drums like that, you know, to make sure that the drums are constantly moving, uh, going up and down in filter, going up and down in pitch, but slightly. So your beat sounds a bit more, uh, more engaging and interesting. You know, I don't think I have it on the head layer here. No, it's not. No, it's only on, on this one and this one. So these two. See, and you can hear they're moving. It makes it way more interesting. So try out LFOs on your drums. Uh, the order of things is just turning on the LFO, switching off the re-trigger, and then you can use the rate here to determine how fast or how slow this should be. I usually make it a bit slow. You can also, instead of hertz, you can click on this little music note and you can make it uh, on the beat. And then it's nice to use one or two bars. So over two bars, so one, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it will go low and it will go back up again over two bars you can also make it three or four bars three is nice then it's like a, a polyrhythm sort of thing you know polymeter it goes uh, it goes in between which is cool um i like to use the the hertz so i try to make it a bit slow and and have it like move over time and not 
not being constrained by uh, 16 or 8 or whatnot. So it goes in between a lot, which makes it more unpredictable and more interesting, I guess. So, yeah, so this is it. And um, I'll go ahead and finish this song. I think it's almost done. Uh, I'm really happy with this uh, this track. Maybe I can play you a bit. I like the vocals in there. So that's the track, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this session on Dive in Life tutorials. Uh, there's way more on the YouTube ten channel of Lessons in Life. Um, there's also free preset packs. Uh, there's a groove template that you can download on gumroad.com slash lessons in life. You'll find the link below. Please share and subscribe and like this video if you like what I do. Uh, on Wednesdays, I do Dive in Life streams with uh, various artists. Uh, the next one coming up this Wednesday is Sidney Charles. So I'm really excited to have him in the stream. He's going to show us a bit on how he did Organica on PIV Records. So make sure to stay tuned to this channel. Share it with your friends. Feel free to send me a message. And if you found this video inspiring, please let me know. All right. I'll see you soon.